my artist friends we are going to start doing a watercolor today so the thing that I thought we might do is something sort of like this and I'm going to show you how to do that this is pretty simple uh, as far as watercolors go but it is a little bit more involved than doing an acrylic painting because you have to wait for things to dry and make sure that you're not running things that you don't want to run together so we, I have a piece of Strathmore 140 pound watercolor. This is an eight by 10. They market this pre-cut water sheets, watercolor sheets so that you can put it in frames. It makes it easier for framing, a little uh, less expensive. So you can put it in a pre-sized frame. Now I have this palette, which on the back is a little bit dirty, but um, we're gonna use this to draw a circle. And when we position it, we're going to put it a little bit up higher and then we're going to maybe make our picture spill out a little into the bottom. So I'm not going to draw the full circle. I mean, you can leave, leave a space kind of, you, maybe you can use a finger to see, or you can use a lid, like a Tupperware lid. Okay. Put your finger in the middle and you're going to kind of do almost a full circle. If you want to do a a circle you can. I'm going to leave mine open at the bottom and uh, set this aside. You're going to need some watercolor. Um, you can use Crayola. You can use the pan colors like you see in my palette over here. You're going to need a spray bottle of some sort, something with water in it, um, a glass of water, and you're ready to go. Oh, don't forget a little paper toweling or a napkin or rag. And then at the end of the video, we're probably going to need some acrylic, white acrylic paint. Um, now, when you do real watercolor, you can leave places white. But for our first experience together, I think it might be just easier for us to go back and add that white back in. Now, some watercolor purists would have problems with that. And I I didn't want to get into the whole thing about resist and all that today. So just to keep it simple and fun for everyone to splash around in the pool of watercolor together. Uh, we're going to eliminate that part. So, let us begin. The first thing we're going to do, of course, is to draw our circle, the pencil. And the next thing that we're going to do is sort of draw our shape for our hill. And we're going to kind of come up... I mean, we're not coming up to the center. We're going to come down a little bit lower than halfway. So if you think of it like a pizza, you're going to come... Like here would be the center, okay? You're going to come down lower than that. And then we're just going to kind of draw a little hill. I'm going to keep it real light right there. Because we're going to end up putting a tent there. Okay, so that this is going to represent the sky. And this is going to represent our land. And then some water down here. So the next thing that we're going to do is first draw a triangle. Okay, and then you're going to draw a, a, a sort of rhombus off the side. So you're going to kind of put this tent back in space and bring it down. Okay, and then we're going to put a cross mark right here because this is where our tent support will be. And then we're going to draw another water line. We're going to pretend like this tent is on the shoreline so what we want to do is create kind of a sketchy place where the land will meet the water and our water we're going to actually bring off out as a dramatic effect okay so I'm going to come in and erase this and I think that is really all of the, the first part that we're going to do. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is get our large round brush. Now, this these brushes are not specifically watercolor brushes. They're kind of an all-purpose brush. We've been using them a lot with our um, other painting and a purpose things that we've done. But um, if you don't have a whole lot of different ones, it's okay to use these. Normally what you'd want is a natural fiber brush um, or a watercolor brush like this. This is one, <laughs> look at the glue on it. This is one um, that came in like a Crayola pack. So let's start with that one instead of the round, the other round brush. This one has more natural fibers. And what we're going to do is lay our background for our sky because it's the biggest part. So we're going to get some water. And we're going to start with this beautiful blue color. And we're going to come in here and lay in some blue. We're going to try to follow that edge as best that we can. Now I have noticed with this particular watercolor that I'm using that it is a little grainy. So be careful. And I am going right up to the edge. And if you need to move your work, move your work. I do that often. Upside down just to get in there really close. We want to lay a good amount of water in there. Okay, so we're going to lay in our first level of our blue. Now, just get some water on your brush and we're going to meet that water with water. Just straight water. And it's going to sort of pull that blue lighter and lighter as we go down. Go ahead and rinse again. Come in here just with water behind this area and meet the blue we've already laid down. So the more water you have with watercolor, the lighter it will be. Okay. All right. And I seem to have some sort of a little grain of pigment there. So I'm going to hit those and try to get those off. And we're going to kind of let that be happy for a minute. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to wipe it on my paper towel. Okay, while this is still wet, I'm going to go ahead with the next darker color. So this little bit darker blue. And I'm just going to do the top right here, right at the edge. While it's still wet. And that's how we get that gradation from light to dark. And I'm going to turn my work again. I've already got a spot on there. <laughs> I like to tape my work off, and I did with an earlier piece. Looks like there's some red in my blue. I found that something happened to my palette and it dropped at some point. And uh, some of the colors mixed. So I have some things where there's this little fleck of color. Most of the time it doesn't bother me, but for this I don't want it to be I don't want red in my blue. All right. Oh, I just gonna go back in this now. Finish up this side. Coming right in here where it is wet, and we're gonna just let our watercolor do its little happy dance with its friends. And then we're gonna add a little water. I'm going to come in here and put water next to the wet pigment. Clean our brush again. Just put some water next to this. Well, we don't want any lines per se, but if you get a few little places, it's okay. So I'm going to let that go for a minute and uh, we're going to jump over here to just a little bit of green. Lots of water. Sometimes I take stuff from my palette and I put it in a clean palette and add water to it just so that I can see that it's mixed up thoroughly and clear. I don't know if you can see that. I better move that over so you can see right here. 
I have put some green. I have a lot of interesting things down the bottom of this. Now we are just going to touch. Let me turn this back around so you can orient yourself. We are just going to touch just a few places with this green. Just to give our sky some interest. Okay, so just the slightest touch. Okay, and then I'm going to rinse my brush and add some water to it to make it fan out. Sort of spread itself a little bit nicer into the picture. Looks like I got a bristle stuck in the side there. All right, now you do see that little thing right there. I'm going to just take a towel and get that right out, just gently, okay? Now, one of the things that's kind of fun with this is to put salt on it. So I thought maybe for this one we'd try to put a little salt. You could use table salt or margarita salt. I'm going to do it just carefully right there just for some added texture. And we're gonna let that dry, okay? So we don't wanna mess with that anymore right now. I'm gonna make sure there's no salt down here. You could even take a brush without getting in your paint, like I just did. Yeah, make sure that this area is clear of salt. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in the water coming out of this bottom section, okay? And then we're gonna to have to take a break and let it dry. So let's go ahead and do the same process we did with the sky, where we lay in blues. And I'm actually gonna let my water sort of spill out from that circle, just for fun. Okay, we're going to come back in with some dark, dark color, dark blue, and we're going to do the sides, so just in here, and actually I might change my brush, just the edges of this. This brush is a little bit big for that, so I might bring my... My br this round brush is big, but it has a nice little point to it. So I'm just going to lay in some darks right at the edge of this blue. Sort of tumbling out, if you will, from our shoreline. And I might actually bring it up a little bit here. We don't want it to look too perfect. Beautiful. Okay. Um, might come in again. Hit these edges with dark. Just to give us some really good deeps in there. Watercolor is about layering. So a lot of people don't realize that. They think you just paint it once and then that's it. But it's really about layers of paint and pigment and leaving some places for it to dry. Lights and darks. Okay, so for now, we are going to stop right here. I'm gonna stop the video and we are going to let this dry. Now, at this point, you can hit it with a blow dryer um, to speed up the process or a heat gun. Those are both ways that you can work quicker or you can set this piece aside and do something else for the time being.
And I do see one little more thing I want to do. I didn't quite get the water line down to the edge, so I'm going to go ahead and just make sure I've hit all the places that I want to hit. Some of this will be covered up by trees, so it's not really that big a deal, but isn't that cool? Okay, so now we have some texture. We're going to give it a chance to do its fun thing. And I'll be right back in a few minutes when this dries. <laughs> 